everyone. Thank you for coming to the Board of Child Care. I'm Laurie Ann Spagnola, the President and CEO, and we're excited to have you here today. The Board of Child Care is a multi-service nonprofit agency, and here in D.C. we deliver an early learning program for 96 children, and we believe in early learning, getting kids off to a great start, and we are really thrilled to be able to share with you the story from Annie Smith. I'll introduce Annie Smith to come forward and tell us a little bit about your experience. Good morning, everybody. My name is Annie Smith. I used to live in Ward 8 in Wingate, and um, I went up to UPO and found out about the um, job fair they had up there. And so they told me about the UPO tax credit that they had up there, that they do taxes for free. And so that's when I talked to a couple of ladies up there, and they um, helped me with my taxes. And um, with that, they gave, you know, they told me that I get back 13000 a bind together. And I said, what? <laughs> and... Um, with that, I got myself a truck. I traded my car and got a truck with it and um, paid some bills off, got caught up on my rent, and then I did my taxes again this year, and I got back 10000 bound together. And with that money, I took and um, opened up an account for my grandkids that I have, and I have a little boy, um, 7 years old, and a little girl, 13 years old. And so I'm saving up their money for they can have a college fair. Of funds, and I opened up um, a retirement plan for myself because I just turned 60 years old, so I got to do something for myself. <laughs> and I thank y'all very much, and um, got the bills paid off, and I'm gonna hand, hand the, bear, the mayor over to y'all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It sounds like you're talking about the earned income tax credit. Yes, oh, is. fantastic. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am delighted to be here with you uh, at the Board of Child Care. This is my first visit to this location, so I'm happy to be here. And I want to thank everybody for welcoming us. Uh, I also like to uh, acknowledge members of my team, the Deputy Mayor Paul Kine for Education. And Stephen Taylor, who is the commissioner of the D.C. Department of Insurance, Securities, and Banking. Uh, Keith Richardson, who is representing uh, the CFO. Uh, and uh, I, an old friend, or a, a long-time friend, Kay Pearson. It's always good to see you here. Uh, and for uh, the introduction uh, that we just heard about how important it is for all D.C. residents to be aware of the uh, tax credits that are available to them. Uh, and I think what you also heard from Ms. Smith, that there are all kinds of free tax preparation services uh, that we want you to be aware of. Uh, it's no need to take advantage of those, you know, those predatory folks who say we're going to give you an advance on your refund and all of that stuff and you end up paying uh, to get access to your own money. So just make sure that you're out there searching for all the free services that are available right here in the Dix District of Columbia and take advantage of them. Uh, the reason we're here today is to bring special attention uh, to a new credit um, that we authored and funded last year in my budget uh, and we call it the early learning tax credit. And um, we know, and we hear frequently, and I know now firsthand uh, how expensive uh, it is to make sure that the children of D.C. Uh, have the best of the best in starting from uh, a very early age um, when they enter child care. We also know that there are incredible benefits to receiving high quality uh, child care. With our little ones having nurturing, healthy, and supportive environments each day, they can be ready to start school. Uh, we want all children in DC to have this advantage. So last year, when we were thinking about how we could make DC more affordable for families uh, we, and how we can expand access to child care, we created this new tax credit for for families with children enrolled in a licensed D.C. child care facility. I'm proud to say that our fiscal 2019 budget, we invested $12.5 million toward making child care more affordable for D.C. residents. Of that $12.5 million, $2.5 million was used to fund the early learning tax credit. 
And now we want to make sure that Washingtonians are claiming that credit, that money, cash. Through the early learning tax credit, families can receive up to $1,000 per eligible child. For some families, this new credit is going to make a big difference uh, and a quite a significant refund. Of course, this is not the only credit that families uh, should pay attention to. We know that every tax season, nearly three in 10 people who are eligible for the earned income tax credit are not claiming it. That means that nationwide taxpayers are leaving billions of dollars on the table. So we can't, um, we don't want anybody to do that, especially in Washington, D.C. You heard the very real um, dollars that can come back to a family that allow the family to make investments, uh, new car, improvements to their home, uh, time, vacation time with their families, books, computers, um, and study for their kids. And so we want to make sure um, that in last year, for example, in 2018, 50,000 workers in D.C. received $117 million in EITC refunds. And we want to get the word out to those who are eligible to file a tax return, even if they do not owe any taxes, you may still be able to claim the EITC. This money um, for workers, uh, we know that you can invest uh, in so many different ways. So with that, I want to uh, I want you to hear from Kay Pearson now, who represents the United Planning Organization, who will briefly talk about uh, EITC eligibility in the district. Thanks, Kay. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Kay Pearson. I'm Director of Community Reinvestment for the United Planning Organization. My division oversees five program areas, which include uh, permanent supportive housing, emergency rental assistance, first-time buyer support, home buyer support, and mortgage assistance. But none is more impactful than the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, which features the Earned Income Tax Credit. In a nutshell, the EITC can be claimed by people who work, um, earn income actually, work work a, a full or part-time job and earn $54,000 or less. So for non, um, for low and income moderate workers, they can claim a tax benefit of up to $6,200 with three qualifying children. The VITA program has grown from helping 200 D.C. residents back in 2009 to over 750 that are we now average over the past few years. Um, that has contributed over $750,000 in revenue from last year and over $2.8 million the year before. According to our partners, the Community Tax Aid, UPO is now the largest tax operation in Ward 8 and the third largest city ride. People like Annie Smith are learning about our tax benefits. And what she didn't tell you is that her husband was able to use that pickup truck to earn an income um, from it. All this is good, but we can do more. The Capital Area Asset Builders estimate that there are over 20,000 residents Uh, who qualify for EITC and don't know it. And they're leaving $40 million on the table, and over half of these are in Ward 8. So our challenge is to get the word out so many more people can transform their life, as did Annie Smith's family. Uh, And we hope that you will take advantage of the EITC program, that you will let your networks know that this program exists Thank you very much, Mayor Bowser. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? Questions? Yes, Martin. I know you're still in the early process. We're kind of actually probably moving towards finalizing the budget for next year. Do you have any plans on uh, kind of re-including this same tax credit for the na- in, in the next budget for the next tax year? I expect um, that we're going to continue with our child care investments. Okay. Yes. 
Can I ask you about Councilmember Evans? I'm sure you've read the Washington Post report over the weekend, both with the subpoenas that, the, that your city administrator has received with regard to Councilmember Evans, and now his staff's use of, of personal of the government email account to solicit outside employment. What's your reaction to, to both of these stories and and the cloud that seems to be hanging over Councilmember Evans right now? Um, well, certainly, um, we will provide any information that's asked uh, of us, and I would expect that any member of the council is being fully cooperative with questions um, regarding use of government resources. What's your, what's your take on that? I mean, Chairman Mendelson just had a press conference and said that he's meeting with his general counsel right now to determine what his options are as far as disciplining uh, Councilmember Evans. He said that he's could be as much as removing him from chairman of the finance Well, committee. as you know, Mark, um, when I was on the council, I set up a, a process where questions like this could be thoughtfully reviewed and answered. Uh, and I think that the appropriate place is for the Board of Elections and Government Accountability. Uh, and they can do a, a full uh, investigation and make recommendations to the council. The council can, of course, um, use its power how, it's, how, how it likes. About any of this? Um, I haven't talked to him since um, the weekend, um, but uh, he, I have talked to him, and he told me that he will be working to answer any questions that are asked of him. Thank you. I've got a question. It's on the same topic, I'm, my name is Steve Thompson. I'm a reporter with the Washington Post. And on that same topic, I just want to ask if you, um, after having read the memos that he wrote, um, essentially marketing his own influence uh, to lobbyists around town who were trying to do business uh, with the city. If anything he wrote, um, you feel like crossed any personal lines for you as far as the, the ethical standards that you hold yourself to, uh, regardless of what a, a city lawyer might figure out or, you know, uh, your own personal uh, sort of ethical compass and codes, did, did what you read in the memo what you read in the memo across any of your personal lines? Um, well, I think about my my focus would be on the process playing out um, and allowing the Board of Ethics and Government Accountability uh, to look at our code of ethics and the government. We're all held uh, to that code of ethics and determine if um, there were any lines crossed. Um, another thing that's coming up before the council tomorrow, Council Member Todd has a bill that would increase the homestead deduction to $125,000 for every homeowner across the city. Um, do you have any thoughts on that bill, on the proposal? Would you support it? Um, or do you have any concerns about the use loss of, of tax revenue? Um, I would absolutely support uh, relief for homeowners across the district. Um, and uh, it is, however, has to be weighed against all the priorities that are important to the district as we look at the budget coming up. Thank you.